today, first and foremost, we're going to talk about the basics. And the basics are posture and breathing. Uh, it's one of the things that I have found that, that remains, remains a constant battle, particularly the breathing, as, uh, regardless of style. You just become a better and a better and a better breather as you become a better, better singer. Um, and you can get away with some pretty good sounds with some mediocre breathing. But if you really ever want to get to the top notch, this whole apparatus better be working pretty well. Um, uh, so let's, let's jump in first to, uh, into posture. And I'm going to ask you to go ahead and stand up where you are. I'll get up a little higher here. So if you've ever studied any Dalpro's method and that type of thing, but it's usually most singing teachers uh, use a lot of those fundamentals, and they may not even, not even know that they're using them, but the, the basic structure is that the head is directly above the shoulders, shoulders directly above the hips, and the hips directly above the, the center of the feet. All right? So if you're about perfectly balanced, you're going to notice that you can easily kind of bounce the heels just a little bit. You're going to notice that there's just a light, you're kind of in control that way. All right? Now, some choirs you may have seen change the, change the, uh, how the feet stand. And they may put one foot slightly in front of the other. Um, typically, what I have always taught, and I think it's probably the, the, the most often taught now, is that it's about shoulder width apart. The feet, the feet are about shoulder width apart. And um, again, the, the alignment is surprisingly difficult for a lot of people to, to grasp, particularly when they sing. And I'll show you what the biggest sin is. And that is this. Okay, once you start going higher in your range, there's a tendency for the head to get out in front of the shoulders a little bit. All right. So you may have seen this. You may have seen this maybe in your church choirs. You may have seen it, and even what you just saw in there. Hopefully, we didn't see very much of it. But um, but the idea that as you go up the scale, and that kind of stretching. All right. Now there's a reason for that, and the reason that you see that happen quite a bit, is that these muscles right down in here really like to get involved in singing. Now, we can use them, and, and they're perfectly okay to use, but we don't need to do this to use them, <laughs> all right? And you kind of feel like you do, and when you're first learning how to sing, this is a, this is a habit that comes back right to the, the time that you're like Tyler's age. I know Tyler back here, so I can use him as an example. Uh, when your voice changes, you're working with a whole new instrument. So particularly if you've been singing before your voice changed, you want to have the same amount of control, and all of a sudden you're dealing with all these bigger muscles, all this bigger apparatus that you're trying to figure out, how can I manipulate this? So you start using some bigger muscles in your neck and your chin that you don't really need. So that's first and foremost. I just want to make sure that you feel that head directly on top of the shoulders, all right? Can we sing, um, this is going to be amazing grace, but I'm going to do it just on the boob. I don't have to worry about words right now. Let's take uh, this key, key right here. Okay, we're going to sing just a little bit of amazing grace. If you don't know it, listen a couple times. I'm sure you'll figure it out. We're just easy. Feels weird. 
Now, some of you said, I think I did that the last, the last row at the same time. What we're going to try to do now is keep that head above the shoulders, because that's where you're naturally going to want to go out of the line. Okay? Here we go. Ready? Just you can stand right there, Ryan. That's perfect. Is that second key okay for you? No. Okay, go for it. Here we go. Yeah, ah, it's fine. Yep. Causing a lot more uh, 
a lot more pressure in those muscles, which is obviously going to reduce the amount of air that you have. So the more that we can get this breathing happening down here, okay, which kind of goes into the next point, the better. All right? Good. How about another volunteer? Anybody else? Well, good. Thanks, Evan. Do you want that key or do you want the lower key? Doesn't matter. Um, I can put that All right. You got it. Still on and off. Singing because usually we're trying to sing the low larynx as much as possible. 
flies. All right. So what we're what we're what, what that tells me that engagement of the the, the muscles, the intercostal muscles, the, the the throat relaxes. You get that that nice drop of, of the singing apparatus, where it is the most comfortable for your voice to sing. All right. If you notice that your larynx raises, and we'll talk a lot more about this next week. If you notice that your larynx raises and your voice box, your Adam's apple goes way up into your throat when you sing. You're going to get a very thin sound, a very strident sound, and you're probably only going to sing for about eh, 45 minutes to an hour before you really get vocal fatigue, right? Because that means you're using a lot of muscles in here you don't need. We want to try to get that nice relaxed feeling. You kind of feel it when I when I talk with it, and I really overdo it. You hear everything open up down there. Okay, so that's the, the back breathing idea. Is that so? Let's try this as an exercise. I'm going to have you. Um, the weird part about back, back breathing is that you don't really feel like you suck in air, that feeling, all right? So what we're doing with this is that when you engage these muscles and you allow your throat to be open, you're going to notice the air kind of leaks in, all right? Your stomach drops just a little bit, but what we're really trying to do is get this expansion out. So let's try it a couple times with me. Here we go. Blow out that air. Now just push that muscle. Good. One more time. Push it. Blow it out. Push that muscle. Good. One more time. Push that muscle. Good. All right. Now, here we're going to try the exercise. You're going you're to uh, just do this on a repeated pattern. We're going to do this five times. You're going to just sing this. If you have a higher voice, you can take it up the octave. Everybody else will stay down here. Okay? We're just going to sing ah, 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 five times. And every time in between, I don't want you to think about sucking air. This is going to be the hardest part about this because you're, wanna, you're going to want to go, if I'm singing, i got to go. And that's what we're trying to eliminate. I don't want you to think about that, that process at all. What I want you to think about is just expanding the muscle. Okay? So we're going to do this five times and all. Here we go. One, two, push muscle. Oh. Instead, this time you're just going to push the muscles back to where they were. All right, and if your throat's open, air should come in, or you're dead. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Try it one more time. Here we go. So, hand in the front, hand in the back, and blow out that air. Sip in the straw. A little bit more. There you go. Feel those muscles. Out, open the air. Rear cage, blow it out. And now push the muscles back. Good. That's the idea. That's how it should sound, by the way. All right. A couple of you guys, and I'm not quite feeling it. Practice a little bit at home. You'll start to see. Um, you start to see that. And particularly if you've had any athletic background whatsoever, you're probably going to feel this because bikers breathe this way a lot. 
Uh, I'm not talking about motorcycle riders. I'm talking about, <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it's just, you kind of get into that habit. Marathon runners have a tendency to breathe, back breathe a little bit. Um, if, if you've done any endurance type of stuff, uh, this is pretty common for you. It probably feels pretty natural. Uh, so let's try it one more time. And now, that when, th th this time we're going to take ourselves through that sipping exercise, blow it out, and then start our exercise back on this. Okay, so here we go. Out and four. Good. In four. Sip. Hold it there a second. Blow it back out. Good. Push muscle and then sing. Here we go. Oh. 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 That's already a better sound. Very nice, guys. Okay, I'm going to ask for somebody that's kind of brave that hasn't had a lot of singing background for this next part. All right, good. Thank you very much. Uh, and it's Matt. Matt, that's right, Matt. Uh, just kind of stand up where you are. Can you sing just a little bit of that amazing grace for us? We're going to start right here. How about this key? sense that you are blowing all the way through the instrument, all the way to that bell, all right? For a French horn, that's a lot of tubing. For a tuba, that's a lot of tubing. But still, the really successful players um, have that sense. They're blowing all the way through the instrument to the wall, like for instance, if you have a trumpet in your hand, okay? So, breathing with singing should be the same thing. Here's your instrument. Starts here, okay? Comes up to here, which another way, uh, by the way, another technical reason that we extend the lips is to make the instrument just a little bit longer. <laughs> All right, so there, there is a technical reason as well. And what you're trying to do, if you know anything about physics and physics of sound, what we're doing with resonance is that we've got, we've got how this body of air, ah ha ha, okay, in your, in your voice is reacting with this body of air out here in the room. So if this body of air never gets to this body of air, you're not going to make very much sound. All right, so what I encourage you to do, I want you to sing that. I don't want any air to, uh, to leave your teeth. Does that make sense? Okay, I want you to feel like you're singing everything inside your mouth. <laughs> Now listen to what it sounds like. Matthew, will you do that one more time for us? And we're 
go back and, and now I just want you to have that sense that you are now sending that air right to that spot. Okay, here we go. Oh, let's go to this key. Right, back in your key. Go ahead and stand. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Feel that? Hear the resonance now in the room? successfully, there has to be some direction to your breath. And, by the way, focus to that direction. Alright, that really helps. For you guys who sing in mics, it's exactly the same. Alright, if you feel like you're, you're worried about popping in the mic and that type of thing, get wind strings, because you're going to sing a heck of a lot better if you actually sing through the microphone rather than into it. Does that, does that make sense? Sing through it, you're just going to sing a lot better. I promise you, I've done a lot of mic technique stuff, and you just want to have that sense that you're going through that. Okay. Um, any any questions on the concept so far? Okay. One other last little thing, and this kind of comes with the uh, this, this kind of comes with the back breathing. When you breathe, <coughs> we want you to breathe as quietly as possible. Now, for two reasons. Number one, it's not very musical, right? If I'm singing, amazing grace, how sweet. It starts to sound pretty silly, you know. Uh, so so that, that's one reason. Is that musical reason? But the second thing is that what happens when you hear, when you hear a breath, what you're hearing is the air rushing by your vocal cords and drying them out. Okay? So when you dry out the very edges of your vocal cords, what's going to happen is that they get just a little bit brittle. They just get, that's why you want to drink a lot, you drink a lot of water, you know, when you're singing. But they get just a little bit brittle just for a second, all right, and make that next onset of the note. Quite a, quite a bit more difficult. So, for instance, if I sing this way, uh, uh, that's much more difficult for my chords to do than this. Uh, uh, okay, you can hear the health. I'm trying to do it exactly the same way. Uh, uh, just has, it has there's a little bit of a grab that your vocal cords want to do. So there's a technical reason that we want you to breathe softly as well. And that's why that back breathing does so well. You know, you, when you back breathe and you're just pushing muscle, uh, you get a lot more healthy onset. Okay? Now, uh, the last little bit, and this is, this is the other side of the singing that we talked about, the other big school of, uh, of thought with, with breathing, is that th there's a breath, there's this, um, when you take a breath, there's a drop. Okay? Because obviously, technically, what's happening is that your diaphragm is pushing everything down. So your guts have got to go somewhere. So when you're, you know, you see a lot of people when they breathe, that stomach sticks out. And that's part of the process as well. So not only the intercostals going out, but you also have a drop down here. This is going to actually push everything down. And so if you have a feeling that you're lifting from below, that also will help you maintain a very steady stream of air, steady stream of sound as well. Okay? So if you go ahead and stand up one more time. And this time I want you to feel like there's a drop. Let's, let's, let's disregard the, this for a little bit, all right? Just for a second. And let's let that drop when we take that, when we take the breath. Okay, so here we are in four. Let that drop in the breath. And now hiss. Lifting up, lifting up, lifting up. Five, six, seven, eight. Let it drop, breath. And again. Two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Very nice. How many of you feel that pretty easily? Good, not too bad. Go ahead and sit. I'm going to try the same thing. Ready? Hopefully I don't knock this over. I want you to lean over on your knees, lean over on your knees as much as you can. Okay? And you're going to try the same thing. Now you're really going to feel this drop if you do it correctly. Here we go. Two, ready, and in. Drop it. And yes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Drop. And hit lift. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you feel that. You can feel your gut pushing against your legs, can't you? Mm -hmm. All right. It does help to feel where that's supposed to be happening. So if you didn't feel your, if you're really, really skinny, 
<laughs> or, or, or maybe you didn't feel that happen. There, there's a possibility that maybe you were still kind of breathing uh, too high. I, I think it's almost impossible in this posture to lift your shoulders, but maybe it is. I don't try over time. Two, you're ready, and in. And yes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you notice I'm not so concerned about the volume of the breath, the intake in this. But let's try it. Do the same thing. Just sit up this time. All right. And again, you can do that drop. Let's just do a quiet breath. Here we go. One and two in. Ready, drop. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. One of our base section leaders, relax. One of our base section leaders is a guy by the name of Brian Beck. Brian Beck is the guy that, uh, and we affectionately say this, he kind of, kind of looks a little bit like Yoda. You may have seen him in there. Um, and Brian is the only guy in the history of the Barbershop Society to have meddled on all four of the parts in a quartet, not meddled, I guess he's top ten, but he meddled on three of them and, and was in top ten on the other. So he's a really, really accomplished singer. He's got a lot of background in saying professional uh, jingle singer down in Dallas uh, for many, many years. And uh, Brian also has a lot of training. Brian's going to teach you a lot of this, and you'll probably get a little bit of his warm-up next week, but he's going to talk about that lift from underneath. You hear me talk a lot about this intercostal breathing, and so in reality, you can do both. You can do both. There's an expansion both ways, not only out, but also dropped. Okay? Try it. Here we go. One, two, try both, and go. Breath. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And again, breath. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? And the last little bit of the concept, guys, the lift underneath is constant. Okay? That lift is constant. The intercostals, the idea is to keep that out, again, 75% of your breath, and then the last 25% you let that, let that collapse. All right? So in reality, what it should look like, your hiss should be like this. Two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight for that last little intercostal push. Okay, try it one more time. Here we go. One and two and ready. Expand. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And again, breath. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Very nice. Good. All right. Questions. Questions. Breathing is one of those. One of those things that feels like you really know how to do it until you really know how to sing and you realize, gosh, I don't really know how to breathe. So it's kind of interesting. <laughs>